Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything. Here with that sweet music. That's right. That's right. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is the college football gambling picks segment of the show. We got a lot to discuss. I went five and three last week, made $48.28. Not as good as I was hoping for. I felt really confident last week. Uh, you went three and one, made $152.27. So as we stand on the season, I am 10 and 15. I'm down $353.99. That is minus 7.08 units. You are nine and eight. But you are minus $31.82, and that is minus six point six four units. That's, so, that's what the juice does to you. Yeah, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. You got a positive record and losing money. But that's the way this thing works. That's why we set it up this way this year. Just saying. Just saying. Steve F. went 9-1 and one in the Pick'em Contest last week. He won a Tunica prize pack. You can do the same. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go up into the football picks contest section. It's right there on the top of the page. You pick 10 games against the spread. You put your name and your email in there. And if you win, I will hit you up. You can also check the spreadsheet from the last however many weeks. It'll be a good time. You can see exactly what you've picked. We've had about 100 contestants, 100 entries uh, each week so far. Uh, second week, we had like 175 or something. I mean, it's it's been really good really really good and you guys have been killing it so continue to do so share that thing out with your buddies go in enter it's free to play yeah takes uh, takes just a few minutes yeah a couple of minutes it's right there on the website you just click through multiple choice easy peasy lemon friggin squeezy that was cheesy as hell i'm never gonna say that again on the on the show ever ever uh, but yeah, go over to the Pick'em Contest, do that thing. You can always subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. Tell us what your picks are for the week. We want to know what you're thinking, what these lines are saying to you. We're going to tell you what we think. Uh, normally, week four, week five is about when we start to hit our stride, when we start to, to really pile on the money. Uh, I don't know how much I like these lines this week, but I, I feel okay about some of them. Uh, next week might be, might be where it's at. We'll see. Maybe not this week, but who knows? I do feel good about some of these. Anyway, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Hit subscribe on the YouTube. Hit subscribe on Apple Podcast, whatever your favorite podcast app is, and please leave a nice review. <sighs> Man, all the way through that, we are three minutes and 15 seconds in. You ready to get rolling? Thank you, Tunica, for sponsoring the uh, show. <laughs> we really appreciate it. You can follow them at Tunica Travel. Dot com. For those of you that don't know, we recorded this on Tuesday nights, pretty close to midnight, roundabout. Um, so yeah, I'm struggling. But we we going to get there. We're going to get through this. We got TJ Reeves coming on the show later on. So listen all the way through the end. He's got some uh, some underdog picks for you. We'll talk the, uh, the big games and whatnot with him. Uh, make sure you check out the NFL Gambling Picks podcast as well. Let's jump in. I'm going to start us off. You start us off. The Kentucky Wildcats are going to the Mississippi State Bulldogs. They will be in Starkville on Saturday. I've got Kentucky plus seven. Kentucky 5-0 and straight up the last five seasons after playing Florida. Mississippi State's quarterback, Tommy Stevens, does not look right. He is day-to-day -day right now with an injury. Even though he came in and played last week, they still had to pull him out because he has got something wrong. Even if he plays this weekend... I think that going against this Kentucky defense is going to be rough stuff. Kentucky, the way that their players are talking, the way that everything around that program is right now, they seem pissed after that loss to Florida. They should have won the ball game, and they didn't. Mississippi State's defense, not nearly as good as they were last year. Uh, the fact that this line is at seven right now, and it will likely move down, I would imagine. It, I, I would imagine. The only thing that I don't like about this is this rivalry. The home team has always won pretty big for the most part. Uh, it's always the home team that wins, but I, I think at some point, trends and streaks like that meant to be broken. I think this is the year. I like Sawyer Smith. I think Kentucky 
uh, finds a way to at least keep this game within about a field goal or so, I think they can win the game. Um, but plus seven just seemed like way too many. Give me Kentucky for 50 bucks at minus 110. Going to New Jersey for my first pick. Boston College on the road after Kansas came in there and put a butt whooping on them. Now, I really like taking teams that overlook somebody, get beat up pretty bad, get embarrassed. Then next week, I think they have one of the best weeks of practice. I don't think they're overlooking anybody. Steve Adazio is going to have this BC team ready, and they are going to take no prisoners going to Rutgers. Rutgers is a bad football team. They're a bad football program. This this line, if if Boston College doesn't get beat last week, this line is a 20-point line. Oh, yeah. No question about it. It is seven and a half right now, and the juice is even money. I'm going to put $100 on BC. Ooh, that's $100 on BC. Give me 100 bucks on BC. A hundo to win a hundo. All right, I can get down with it. I can get down. Next game up for me, Colorado going to Arizona State. Now, the Sun Devils coming off a massive win in East Lansing. Things are looking good for the program. Obviously, you guys understand how much I like Jaden Daniel. That kid is ridiculous. Colorado won this game last year. Arizona State only had two Pac-12 games that were not within one touchdown. One was against Oregon State. The other was against an injured Utah where the quarterback and the running back both went out. Defense was having problems, all sorts of mess, right? But everything else was within one score, was within a touchdown. Arizona State, after that big win, Colorado State is coming off of, you know, a, a soul-crushing loss in overtime. To Colorado. Air, uh, oh, yeah, what did I say? Colorado State. Sorry. No, Colorado. Keep rolling. Either way. Well, both of them lost last week. Yeah. But Colorado, just bad loss to Air Force at home last week. Redemption game. This is a prime spot, right? Colorado coming off the loss. You got to pick yourself up off the mat. Arizona State feeling a little maybe too good about themselves coming back home. I like Colorado in this spot. Give me the Buffalo plus eight. I got 50 bucks on it at minus 110. Going to Missouri, another road team. I got South Carolina plus nine and a half minus 110 for 50 bucks for your gear, your paperwork. Um, 50 bucks. At Missouri. Now, Missouri's looked really good after that week one loss to, to Wyoming. Okay. That's true. South Carolina is a tough football team. Missouri's look good against nobodies. All right. South Carolina has played a pretty dis- difficult schedule to this point. And I think they look really good. Um, I think Muschamp thought a couple of things that, that, that went against them in the Alabama game to at least let them in that game. They stayed with them. They stayed close the whole game. And, and they fought you know, real hard. Alabama's just a completely different beast. Missouri? Missouri's not that beast, okay? No. That they can put up points in bunches, but but Missouri is not going to give any type of fits uh, whatsoever the way the way Alabama did. Um, Will Muschamp, uh, Ryan uh, Hilinski. Hilinski. I knew yeah. I was going to butcher that. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> just this kid, this kid looks like he's going to be a star. Oh yeah. I mean the, the 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 SEC is in good hands. This is a a a freshman that is not afraid to go out there. And, and face anybody in the country. I mean, he stood toe to toe with Bama, and that was that was that's maybe the best in the SEC. Yeah, Missouri's not going to be that. I'm catching nine and a half points. I, I love love South Carolina. I am I am with it. All right, next up for me, Washington, the Washington Huskies, going to the BYU Cougars. BYU coming off two overtime wins back to back. I just, it's way too many, um, way too many big games in a row. They had the Holy War on opening night of college football. Then they travel to Tennessee, get a big time win. They come back home. They beat a top 25 USC team. At some point, your body's just going to kind of give out a little bit. Washington, after losing that game to Cal, I think they are on a mission. I think Jake Eason... Finds a way to get this thing done. Washington, look, I get it. One and five in their last six as a road favorite. But BYU, before that win last week, they were 0-4 in their last four as a home dog. 
like 0 and 4 against the spread as a home dog. They had not even been able to cover. Um, BYU, I mean, three straight Power Five opponents with two of them going to overtime. I think Washington goes in and gets this done. I think they lay down the hammer. I like the Huskies in this spot. I think Jacob Eason is able to throw the football uh, a lot more successfully than even Keaton Slovis was. And, and Slovis was able to move the ball. He was able to put up numbers and, and everything else. I like the Huskies here. Give me Washington minus six. I'm putting $75 on it at minus 110. So I'm going to Chicago's Big Ten football team, Northwestern. They got Mississippi State coming in, or Michigan State, sorry, coming in off of a, a pretty tough loss in East Lansing. And uh, I think Michigan State is going to be fired up. I think they're going to be upset. And I don't think it matters because I don't know that how pissed off they are. They're not going to play a Big Ten team all year outside of Rutgers that they're going to be able to just be double-digit favorites on. Yeah. This is nine and a half points. I, I saw this line. I thought, what in the hell is going on? I mean, what did I miss? And then when you go to sites like Vegas Insider, it, originally early in the week, it was the majority of people still piling on Michigan State. Do they know something I don't know now? No, it's, it's leveled out. It's, it's leveled it's, out. But it's it even now. It was 70, yeah, something, 80%. Percent. And it's just, I don't understand it. Look, Northwestern, that they're not the 10-win the team that we thought they were going to be before the season. Okay, And I don't think they're going to compete for the Big Ten title like we thought before the season. But they're not just some punk where you're just going to come into their house and beat them by 10. I don't see that happening. Not, not this Michigan State team. Not them. Okay, maybe somebody else might do it, but it won't be these guys. Give me Thank Northwestern. You. Give me seventy-five bucks on them. And give me all of it. I, I love Northwestern this week. That's exactly what I had on it. Seventy-five bucks. Let's go right there. I'm I'm doing the same thing. Same thing as Chris. Northwestern plus nine and a half. Seventy-five dollars at minus one ten. Northwestern covered and won four of the last five as an underdog to Michigan State. That's right. They have been an underdog five times to Michigan State. They won four of them outright. I, I don't that understand is, why Northwestern is still not getting any respect. Michigan at all. State four and six overall, three and seven against the spread in their last ten as a road favorite. They don't cover lines as a road favorite. No. Uh, so I'm I'm all over Northwestern on this spot. I, I think I think Hunter Johnson has a pretty good day. I, I, I think he does as well. I think they can't run on them, but Michigan State's defense is just suffocating. But I think they can throw on them. And then the other thing is, you can't beat somebody if you don't score. And I think Northwestern's defense is pretty damn good. Yeah. They, Michigan State has yet to play a defense that's good, and they can't score against the bad that, defenses. Arizona State's defense is really good. Okay. Really good. I'm telling you. Okay. That's, I mean, that, that is, that's like number seven defense. Of the, I mean, just. We, we, played th- we played three games, and I, I bet they played one good team that was Michigan State. And, and we know what their offense is. is terrible. So okay. call, call me at the end of the season, and we'll see whose defense is ranked better. It might be. They, they could easily be, and I'd be wrong on that. I, I, will, I will take my chances with the team that I've chosen in this, and we'll see what happens at the end of the year. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, I'll go on, and, and since I have more than you, I'm going to go ahead and do one more. I've got Washington State against UCLA. Now, this is up in the Palouse. This is, uh, this is in Pullman. Minus 18 and a half against the Bruins. UCLA 0-3 against the spread this year. They are the number 110 most efficient offense in the country out of 130 teams. The number 92 most efficient defense out of 130 teams. That, by the way, in case you're trying to figure all that out, that means they're really, really bad. Really bad. Washington State, number 7 offense. Now, only the number 86 most efficient defense. Doesn't matter on defense because I don't think that UCLA can score, right? Um... Washington State six and one in their last seven as a double-digit home favorite against the spread. They're seven and two against the spread in their last nine against Pac-12 competition up in Pullman. Uh, they did not cover against Cal. They did not cover against Washington in those last nine. That's it. UCLA is neither Cal's defense nor Washington's just football team and coaching. Right. I love Washington State here. I think they put it on UCLA. I think Mike Leach wants to prove a point against Chip Kelly. I like this spot. Give me the Cougars minus 18 and a half. I'm putting $100 on it at minus 110. It's a lot of points. That's I, we, we both love Mike Leach. Yeah. 
My next pick, Central Florida last week made Stanford just look bad. I mean, God awful. Now, Stanford came to their house. This week, Central Florida's going to Pitt. And I don't think Pitt's very good either. All right. The people that I do think are good, I, I think I think Josh Heupel, really good coach. Proven to be able to hold his own in this conference, in college football, hang with anybody. Dylan Gabriel. That's a freshman quarterback that has looked spectacular. There is no more who's the quarterback, who's going to get this job, who's getting these reps. It's his job. And I think he's going to go up to Pitt, and I think he's going to whip their butt. I think they are making statements when they play these Power 5 teams. Not a lot of Power 5 teams will play them. When one does, they are whipping their butt. It's minus 12. I don't care. Minus 12 is a lot of points. A lot of points. I'm, I'm curious about that game. Do you think Pitt's a better football team than Stanford? Because they beat the hell out of Stanford. No, but that was going down to Orlando. That was just a weird situation, right? Okay. I, I, no, okay. I don't think that Pitt is better than Stanford. So the weather's going to be nice for both teams. It's going to be 50, crisp autumn day probably in Pitt's. Okay. I don't think it'll be 50. But I, don't, I, don't know that, I don't know that that hurts Central Florida. No, I don't think it does either. I just, man. Now you've seen Pitt's offense. Do you think Pitt can score on this team? Because I don't know that they can. I don't think this UCF defense is is great. Well, they were pretty good against Stanford. Yeah, I, man. I, look, I'm staying away from the game. Okay, I'm staying away from it. I got a hundred dollars on the, it. So. The metrics have got it as more like an eight point game. That's fine. Um, which really surprised me. That's fine. Really surprised. I me. could I be just, wrong. I didn't know what was going on there, and I just I said, okay, I'll just so because they, again had a really big spot for UCF last week. And now they got to go travel on the road to another Power Five team, and you got to get up again emotionally for it. And I just now I do think that they're better than Pitt. I mean, they destroyed them last year, but I don't know. It, I'm I'm staying away from that one, and I will let you have it all day long. Next game up for me. You love when I do these. Troy, traveling to Akron, Ohio, and I know that you like them, right? Troy minus seventeen. They are a big-time favorite here. Number 26 offensive efficiency team, Troy is. They have put up 42.5 points on average in their two games this year. Scored 42 against uh, uh, Southern Miss, who we both know has a pretty damn good defense. Yeah, I like Southern Miss, so yeah. That's they impressive. Put up, put up 43 in their first game. Held the uh, the FCS team. They played uh, basically nothing. Uh, their defense did not look so good against Southern Miss. The biggest thing was special teams. They could not stop that kick returner for nothing. They gave up 47 points at home. I think they come out pissed off. Akron, number 129 in offensive efficiency, number 99 in defensive efficiency. Akron, 2-6 and six against the spread in their last eight as an underdog. They have not covered in the back half of 2018 and in 2019. This is a bad football team. What do you do against bad football teams? You bet against them. Troy... As only a 17-point favorite, I think they absolutely slammed the door on these guys. I think they went by three, four touchdowns, probably closer to four touchdowns. Uh, I think they come out and prove a point, get back up off the mat, give me the Trojans minus 17 for 50 bucks going on the road. And then you got one more. My last bet. Last bet. Going back to Austin, Texas. I've done well in Austin so far. Oklahoma State coming in town, fighting Mike Gundy's. Mike Gundy does not like Tom Herman. No. Mike Gundy does not like Texas. Mike Gundy is not afraid of Texas at all. I think he's going to go down there. I think he's got a really good chance at winning this football game, and I'm going to take all five of these points. I got $50 minus 110 on Oklahoma State, and I think they can take off the W. I really do. I know Oof. that's crazy. And I know Texas fans are going to hate it, but he's won four out of the last five straight up. I, he's he's, well, he's, he's, won, he's won four straight. Four straight. He's won right. five out of the last six. That's right, yeah. So he's won yeah. five out of the last six. You're right. He's won four in a row. I, I think he's got a – and I think this Oklahoma State team is better than the last three Oklahoma State teams yeah. that beat Texas. 
I think he's just got this team's number. I don't know what it is. He can't beat Oklahoma, but he seems to find a way to beat Texas. And I'll yeah. get a five-point lead before the game starts. I'm taking it. I'm just taking it. My last bet. I'm wary of this one because it, it opened as a pick em. It immediately jumped to Cal minus one. Now it is at Cal plus two in Oxford against Ole Miss. It's an 11 a.m. game. It's going to be hotter than who knows what. It's going to feel like you're walking through a mouth down there. Humidity, 98 degrees or 98 percent, whatever it is. Uh, Cal has covered six straight as a road underdog. They are seven and two against the spread with four straight up wins in their last nine as an underdog overall. Uh, Wilcox knows how to play the spoiler role. Ole Miss, I think that if Nick Starkle had played for the entire ball game for Arkansas, I think Ole Miss would be one and two right now as opposed to two and one. Okay. I th- they were going to win last week, but they did not look good against their FCS competition, Southeast Louisiana, last week. They gave up 29 points. Now, I don't think that Cal's offense is great by any means. But I don't, I still don't think Ole Miss is very good. Okay. I don't think they got the players, I, I, and I think that Cal's defense will find a way to win this ballgame. Uh, I'm going to take the two points just because, you know, with the money line, it's really... Well, yeah, it's too small. It's too small. So give me the two points just in case something crazy happens. Uh, but I'm going to put 50 bucks on Cal plus two at minus 110. And now, and you're done, right? I'm done. I got a money line parlay like I've done every week. We hit last week. I got another one for you. Come on. Georgia is minus 550 over Notre Dame. Oregon, minus 390 at Stanford. Florida, minus 600 against Tennessee. Troy at Akron is minus 900. Temple at Buffalo is minus 550. All of that combined is plus 122 if you're just picking winners. I'm going to put 25 bucks on it, plus 122 to pay out $30.52. I love it. I love it. I love it. Give me that money line parlay. Give me that sweet, sweet nectar. That's going to wrap up the show. We're going to discuss some of the bigger games with our buddy TJ Reeves right now. All right, we got TJ Reeves in with us from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He joins us every week to talk about some underdogs that are that are possibly going to hit. And we've, we've been pretty good with them here so far. Uh, TJ, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. And listen, we had the golden touch for a little while going last Saturday in college football. 100%. Somebody... Somebody had the Arizona State Sun Devils, and and look, uh, it was not exactly a home free there at the very end of the <laughs> no. game with no, Michigan State and all the controversy where they kicked the they kicked the tying field goal only to find out wait a minute we got twelve guys on the field uh, and then they have to re kick it and miss. And now the Pac-12 comes out after the game and says, oh, yeah, one of the Arizona State guys was leaping, and that should have been a 15-yard penalty and first down Michigan State with a chance to run maybe another play or kick a closer yeah. field goal. So what a mess at the end of that game. But, hey, it does not matter, Gary Speakers. You had the Sun Devils on Three Dog Thursday, brother. You got that right. You got that right. As a matter of fact, I had, uh, I had a Sun Devils money line ticket that, uh, that worked out rather well for me. So I yeah. believe uh, I believe it did, and and by the way, I had two underdogs in college on college uh, uh, football Saturday that came through with look. They had the weather delay. Iowa State and Iowa. It was it, it was a rock fight for a lot of the game. Oh, what a uh, ball it was game. a lot of growling and a lot of saliva and not a whole lot of football uh, excellence. Ooh. But Iowa won by one, and Iowa State got the cover. So we'll take that one. And I loved BYU at home with uh, Southern Cal with USC, and that was a back-and-forth wild game. And what is it with the Mormons, the fighting the fighting Mormons, the Cougars? They pull out another overtime game. They beat Tennessee <laughs> in overtime. They beat USC in overtime. If it's going to OT, watch out for Brigham Young, boys. That's the, the cardiac Cougars. 
hundred percent. And they're an un- and by the way, they're an underdog again this week with the Washington Huskies at home again. Chris Giannini, what is that? Is that like a five point line there, something uh, like that, four or five? It's, uh, it's a it's six. six. It's yeah. six. It's at six. Yes, sir. That's very tantalizing. Tantalizing word of the week. Tantalizing there. BYU maybe again on Three Dog Thursday. We'll find I, out. We're, we're actually looking at the, the spread money right now. There's 86% of the bets on Washington right now. That's and, a good and, thing if you I, like BYU. And, and the line moved down. Because it, yeah, it went from I, six and a half down to six with 86%. Did, did the 86% the see that BYU beat Southern Cal last week at home and they're at home again? I mean, okay, yeah, whatever, I just, we'll uh, see. We, I think everybody feels like Southern Cal is not a very good football team and that the win wasn't super impressive. Is, so no, the, 80, no respect is, the, 86%, is the 86% aware that Washington blew a game at home to Cal? I mean, yeah. come on. I so. Mean, uh, it, it all it all factors in here. Uh, we'll see. Listen to me <laughs> sounding like I'm Lavelle Edwards' uh, spokesperson, the late Lavelle yeah, Edwards' swear, spokesperson. Right? But the, the the Brigham Young Cougars, keep an eye on them. You are we'll, we'll uh, you are Kalani Sataki's PR guy. I swear. Yeah, <laughs> potentially, potentially, yes. All right. Now, what else? You, what else you got on the mind here? For the, I know you want to talk a little hunker down, you hairy dogs, uh, and Notre that. Dame, right? Believe that. That is. So we got a couple of really big games this week. Yeah. I'm curious your thoughts because we we got some dogs in these, and they're road dogs. Notre Dame, 14 point underdog at Georgia, mm-hmm. uh, night game. You know. Athens has been waiting for a big-time yep. spectacle like this. College game day yep. is going to be there. CBS made it the night game rather than, uh, you know, they've got one night game a year. It's normally Alabama LSU, but instead they picked Georgia and Notre Dame. It, Notre Dame has a history of getting blown out in these <laughs> spots, right, against the, yep. the big time. Can they can they hang at all? I don't Georgia? know. I don't, I don't know if they have the defense to hang with Georgia. And how about this? In the last five years, Brian Kelly has only been at least a 14-point underdog twice. One of them was the college football playoff game with Clemson last year. How did that work out? Uh, Blowout loss. And the other one was a couple of years ago to USC, where I believe they were a uh, 17-point underdog, I believe, in 2016. And USC wiped them out the year they were 4-8 and and covered that line. So it's not often you're getting Notre Dame with this many points, but guys, I am very hesitant with the Irish and that Class A hostile environment, Sanford Stadium. I, I don't, I don't know that I can go with Notre Dame in this game, guys. Let's uh, let's talk about another hostile environment. Let's talk about Camp Randall. Ooh. 11 a.m. kick at Wisconsin. Of course, Fox. <laughs> I know they're trying to kill everybody, right? It's a, they uh, they either are off? going to be starting very early getting lathered yes. up or they're just not going to go to bed while uh, lathered up in agree. Madison. And uh, they've agree. had a bye week, and the last that we saw of Michigan, uh, the Army had them on the ropes and maybe should have landed the knockout punch. Uh, Wisconsin, again, we've talked on your show before with Jonathan Taylor running back. Each team, the bye week to prepare for this game – very, very interesting. Harbaugh, an underdog in this. What is that line now, Chris? Three. At the time that I we're got, talking, three? I got three. Is it three now? I got three was, on that it was one. Three very, and a half an hour ago. Very just, interesting game. And it may, as we get closer to Saturday, it may get bet down a little bit closer there on that. And look, uh, there, there, I think there's more questions about Michigan uh, that need to be answered here. And, and, how, and remember, a year ago, they annihilated Wisconsin at home. And, and Wisconsin has not forgotten that. So let's see. That'll be a big topic on Three Dog Thursday, obviously, this Big Ten showdown. Yeah, you, you got that right. Harbaugh, 0-6 against the spread as a dog at Michigan. <laughs> just uh, just tossing that out there. He he is uh, – or sorry, sorry. He is 0-6 straight up. He's 2-4 and four against the spread as an underdog at Michigan. But, uh, but, yeah, that's still not a great spot to be in. Let's uh who do you like? Yeah, tell me tell me some of the things that you're leaning towards looking at for Three Dog Thursday. All right, a couple of other games. Tennessee and Florida. Do not laugh at me. I'm no volunteer. We've covered this on the show before, even though I was born in the great volunteer state of Tennessee. I now live in the state of Florida, as I joke with you and joke with us all the time. I do not live in the state of confusion. I do live in the state of Florida. <laughs> Huge showdown here. This traditionally has been a close game recently, although Florida won big a year ago. The previous three matchups, 
Uh, actually, the previous four matchups before that were all basically one-score games. A couple of them Florida pulled out with last-second touchdowns at home. I think Tennessee may keep this game close. We're going to debate this one a lot. Florida and Tennessee, uh, early start again, noon, hot, going to be very hot. Uh, about 95, dripping wet with humidity for the Vols and the Gators. Uh, and, and Florida, again, going with the two quarterbacks. We believe Dan Mullen's going to play both Kyle Trask and Emory Jones in the game. Let's see what happens. Let's see if Tennessee has a little bounce back, a little swagger in their step after they pounded Chattanooga last week, and they and they hang in there in the SEC showdown. I, I like it. I like it. All right. Thank you, TJ, for jumping in on the show. Go check out his podcast, Three Dog Thursday. Comes out every Thursday. Pretty nice. About the same time as our gambling podcast. So you get done listening to ours, you can go over and listen to his as well. Uh, our buddy Chris here will be on the show uh, today, actually. So there you go. Go listen to that. Check it out. <sighs> I think that's going to do it. It's a wrap, baby. You feeling good? Yep. Think we're going to win this week? I think boy, so. Boy, we need it. Boy, we need it. All right, go into the Pick'em Contest. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to tunicatravel.com. We'll see you guys again next go round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.